What's happening? It's Shane here and you know what time it is. It's tier list time, baby. And it's also time for you to smash the like button because that really helps to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm and you should just automatically do that on all my videos. But yeah, let's jump right into this one. Some credit cards are much better than others. There's entire YouTube channels and websites that are dedicated to credit card churning and getting the best cash back or getting the best sign on bonuses. But today I'm going to save you a ton of time because I did a lot of research and I actually got a bunch of these credit credit cards and then the ones that I didn't some of my friends did so I was able to check them out that way so these are going to be some of the best and the worst credit cards that are available out there all right so let's just jump into it first one on the list is going to be the Amazon Prime Rewards credit card now I'm not going to go too deep into the details on these because that would make the video way too long and I want to keep this video well under 20 minutes if I can but if you already use Amazon a lot you're an Amazon Prime member to take advantage of that amazing two-day free shipping then this is a credit card that you absolutely absolutely should get. I use Amazon a lot in order to get stuff delivered to me. So for instance, I'll get paper towels and toothpaste delivered to me every few months. And it just saves me a lot of time and a lot of hassle overall. And to me, that's worth paying a little bit extra for the delivery. So if you're already using Amazon for that reason, you are going to get 5% cash back on your purchases. That is incredibly good. Now on top of that, you also get 2% cash back at restaurants and gas stations. This is a no annual fee credit card if you don't count the amount of money that you have to pay for your prime membership and overall I just think the combination of the amount of time that Amazon saves you the value that they give the fact that you can get stuff in two days if you need it and the fact that it gives 5% cash back on all purchases at Amazon as well as Whole Foods means that this one is S tier status. I have this card and it's one of my favorites. Another one that I have is going to be the American Express Gold Card. And this one is especially good when it comes to dining out. So first of all, it offers a really good sign-on bonus. I think at the time I signed on, I got, I think, 40,000 points as long as I spent $4,000 within the first three months. Right now, I saw some of the promos that were offered were around 35,000 membership reward points, but I'm sure if you looked around enough, you could find something better than that. Now, on top of that, it does offer four four times the amount of membership rewards points when it comes to cash back if you use it for dining out, and then three times the amount of points if you use it for flights. Now this is a annual fee credit card and it does cost about $250 a year. A lot of channels out there love recommending annual fee credit cards and in my opinion for the average person they're not going to be worth it. There are a few exceptions in my opinion, ones that really do offer just an exceptional you know, sign on bonus or something along those lines, and I included both of those on this list and the American Express gold card is one of those. This is also a card that doesn't have foreign transaction fees so that's kind of a nice perk. Sometimes I go across the border to Canada and I do end up using this card a lot of the time and basically without getting into too much of the details this is a really good card if you want to use it for dining and it's pretty good if you want to use it for travel as well. So if you're someone who spends a lot of money dining out or if you're someone who spends a lot of money traveling then you might want to look into getting this card. However if you don't already spend a lot of money in one of those two categories, you probably don't want to get this card because you're going to feel like you're kind of forced to spend that money, that $4,000 that you have to spend within the first three months. You're probably going to end up spending it on things that you wouldn't have bought otherwise. When I first got this card, I was going to be buying a computer anyways. And so I got the card, I spent the money on the computer that I was going to buy anyways. And that's how I was able to meet that $4,000 within the first three months relatively easily. A lot of people fall for the trap on these annual fees credit cards of thinking that they're not going to spend more just to meet that initial amount. So be really careful there. Overall, I'm going to go ahead and put this one in A tier. Another one that I didn't include on this list that is also really good in my opinion is going to be the American Express Blue Cash Everyday card. So if you want to use American Express but you don't want to do the annual fee, I would recommend doing that one. The only downside to using American Express cards is there's a lot of places that actually don't accept American Express and so you'll end up having to use another card anyways. Next one on the list is going to be the Apple credit card and honestly this one has had a lot of changes since it first came out and basically the big thing about this one is if you have an iPhone and you use Apple Pay for your purchases and you use the credit card through Apple Pay then you can get some really good cash back bonuses for instance you can get 3% cash back at Nike stores as well as if you buy any Apple products you also get 2% cash back on most other purchases if you use Apple Pay but there's two big problems with this the first one is not 
everybody has an iPhone. And then the second big problem is not all places actually accept Apple Pay. I see this one potentially becoming a dark horse candidate though in the future as more and more places start to accept Apple Pay and more and more people start to buy iPhones. I don't personally have an iPhone. I have a Google Pixel and so I don't actually own this card myself, but I do have some friends that own it and it's pretty good. They like it. Overall, I'm going to have to go ahead and put this one in C tier just because of the fact that not everyone has an iPhone. And yes, I'm probably being a little bit salty here. Next one on the list is going to be the Bank of America Cash Rewards card. And this is one of those cards you're going to see a lot if you go to some of the, you know, credit card channels on YouTube. And the reason for that is because they offer really good cash back, but there's a few little asterisks in there, okay? First of all, I have to give them credit. They offer an incredible sign-up fee where if you spend $1,000 within the first three months, you're going to get $200 online cash rewards back. Honestly, that's one of the best offers out there. So the big selling point here is you get to choose a category. Like let's say you spend a lot of money on gas or let's say you spend a lot of money dining out. You can choose that one category and you can get 3% cash back. But there's all kinds of tiny little exceptions to this. Like you can only spend up to $2,500 on your combined choices. And if you're a preferred rewards member, AKA somebody who also banks with them, you can get 25 to 75% more on your cash back. And I think because of the fact that it has such a good sign on bonus, this is definitely a great one if you're a beginner and you wanna get your first couple credit cards. And if you're smart about how you use the 3% cash back category and you read all of the little exceptions that they have, you can really maximize this card. So overall, I'm going to have to put this one in A tier. Next one on the list is going to be the Chase Sapphire Reserve, and this is going to be the second annual fee credit card that I recommend. So if you're somebody who travels all the time, this might be the best card for you. What I mean by that is if you're somebody who spends a lot of money traveling already, you're not planning on doing it, but you're doing it already, getting this card can definitely pay off for you. And that's because you can earn 50,000 bonus points as long as you spend $4,000 in purchases in your first three months. And that equates to about $750 in travel credit. On top of that, you get $300 in annual travel credit that will be reimbursed to your account as long as you're spending money on traveling in the first place. And then after you hit that $300 of travel credit, you will get three times the points in cash back on anything related to travel expenditures. It also has $0 foreign transaction fees, which is a huge perk if you're traveling to another country. And honestly, there's a ton of other little perks and benefits here, and it would just take way too long to go over all of them. But the big thing here, the reason that it is not going to go into S tier, and the reason why I have a lot of reservations about getting any type of annual fee credit card is because there is a whopping $550 annual fee. So this card and the American Express Gold card are both you know metal they're very hefty and because of that they have a lot of people who really want to get them it's almost like a status symbol or something like that but you are going to pay a pretty penny for that hefty little credit card and you need to make sure that you would have already been spending a bunch of money on either traveling or dining out in the first place in order to justify signing up for one of these. Overall, this is a really good one. I am gonna go ahead and put this one into B tier. Next one on the list is going to be the Costco credit card. And this one is especially good if you do all of your grocery shopping at Costco. For one, if you get your gas at Costco, you can get 4% cash back, 3% cash back on restaurants and other eligible travel purchases. Now there's technically no annual fee here, but you are going to have to pay your annual Costco membership in order to get the card and in order to redeem the points. And on top of that, the points only redeem once a year and you have to go to a physical Costco location in order to use them. So I guess if you are a Costco member already and you would have been paying for that service anyways, this one might be worth it for you to sign up for. But overall, I think it is a little underrated in the grand scheme of things. So this one is gonna go into C tier. Next one on the list is going to be the Credit One Platinum card. And hmm, the logo on this one looks suspiciously similar to Capital One. That seems really sketchy to me and whenever you see something like this where they're trying to kind of like look like another company in order to kind of like trick you into thinking that they're another company to me that's a huge red flag now this one might be a decent option for you if you kind of have like a low credit score and you're trying to build it back up but it has really high interest rates and so you're going to want to pay off your balance every single month uh, you do not want to have to pay those interest rates they're way too high so overall you really should not get this one and the one exception to that is if you have really bad credit you can maybe go for this one just to build up your credit score and then you probably would want to cut it up after a few months 
and then get another credit card because the perks on it just aren't that great and just overall it's not that great of a card in general. So this one is gonna go into D tier. Next one on the list is going to be the City Double Cash card. And basically this is exactly what it sounds like. You get 2% cash back on all of your purchases as long as you pay off the balance at the end of the month. And another thing I should mention with all of these credit cards is there's pretty much no reason why you shouldn't just pay off the entire balance automatically every single month. If you're not automatically paying off the balance every single month or you think that you're not gonna be able to do that, you probably should not be getting a credit card. Now, I think out of all the credit cards on this list, the City Double Cash is probably my favorite just because of how stupidly simple it is. There's no annual fee. You get your 2% cash back as long as you pay off your balance. No if, ands, or buts about it. You don't have to like check to see, you know, oh, did I put the 3% cash back on this category or is this some rotating category over here? Anything like that, it's very simple. You get the card, it's 2% cash back. I don't think they're ever gonna change that. It's gonna be 2% cash back pretty much no matter what because it's literally the name of the card, Double Cash. This is also a credit card that you'll have a good chance of getting if you're a beginner. Some of the credit cards on this list, like the American Express Gold card, you might not get if you're a beginner and your credit score isn't high enough yet. But this is one where you'd have a pretty good chance of getting it even if you have a normal credit score. And in my opinion, it's the best one on the entire list. So this one is clearly S tier status. Another really good beginner card is going to be the Discover It credit card. Now, first of all, they offer one of the best introductory offers on the entire market. Discover will match all of the cash back you earn at the end of your first year. So let's say you got $300 cash back at the end of your first year, they will match it and you'll end up getting $600. And there's actually no limit to how much is matched. That might be the best offer on the entire list. Like that is incredible. Unfortunately, it only lasts for one year. And so after your first year, you're not gonna get that incredible offer again. But the second big selling point with the Discover It credit card is the fact that you get 5% cash back on everyday purchases at different places such as grocery stores. And then the last big selling point on this one is it is technically a beginner card. You can apply for this one and you'll likely get it with an average credit score, maybe even a low credit score. So for that reason, I definitely have to put this one in A tier. It's one of the best on the entire list. The next one on the list is going to be the Fidelity Rewards Visa Signature Card. Now this one is very similar to the City Double Cash where you'll get that 2% cash back on pretty much all of your purchases. The only catch here is that the 2% cash back has to be deposited right into your Fidelity investment account. So if you prefer to redeem the cash back in a different form, it's only going to be 1%, which isn't that great. But if you're okay with getting the cash back deposited right into an investment account, then you're good to go. Again, it's just like the city double cash where there's no you know, exceptions, if, ands, or buts about it. You just get the 2% cash back. Boom. On some of these, you'll see they have really good cash back, but then when you read the tiny print, it's like there's all these different exceptions and all this different BS that you have to deal with. And I really like the cards that are just straightforward. You get whatever it says that you get. So Fidelity has done it again here. Um, you can see that this is a company that is extremely dedicated to giving the best possible service, whether it's their bank account, their investment account, or any other number of services such as their savings. Really love Fidelity. This one goes in S tier. Next one on the list is going to be the Master. MasterCard Gold Card. Now, in my opinion, this one is pretty sketchy, okay? Um, I'm picking my words very carefully here because I just don't wanna trash the company, but now the thing about getting a metal credit card is generally you have to have a pretty good credit score in order to qualify for them. So this company noticed that and they realized that there's a huge demand of people who want metal credit cards but they don't necessarily have a good credit score. So what did they do? They created the MasterCard Gold Card. Now I'm not gonna go into the details that much, but the cash back that you get on this is not very good when you compare it to almost all other annual fee credit cards. The annual fee for this one is $995. Do I need to say anything else? F tier. Oh, but wait, there's a different one. The MasterCard Black Card. It's very similar to the MasterCard Gold Card, except the annual fee is only $495. F tier for both. Next one on the list is going to be the Target Card Red Card. And this is basically for people who shop at Target. Any follower of my channel should not be regularly shopping at Target. Target is honestly extremely expensive compared to a lot of the other brick and mortar stores. And it's basically designed for Karens across 
across the US to spend 1.5 to two times as much as they should on everyday household items. Seriously, there's videos of people going to Target and finding something and then they go to the dollar store just down the block and they find that same thing for one third of the price. Look it up if you don't believe me. I guess if you already shop at Target all the time, this one would be worth it. It does have really good perks and benefits, but really you shouldn't be shopping at Target all the time. And for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in D tier. Next one on the list is going to be the Reflex card. And this is another one that basically caters to people who have really bad credit scores. This is very similar to the Credit One credit card, but it's actually a lot worse. Really high fees, really high interest rates. Um, you have to make sure to pay it off every single month. You cannot miss a single payment or you will be screwed. Maybe you should consider this one if you just have horrible credit and they're the only ones that will give you a chance. But overall, if you have bad credit, there are better options out there. The Reflex card is gonna go into F tier. Next one on this list is going to be the Uber credit card. And until very recently, this one was actually one of the best on the entire list. They recently changed a bunch of things with the Uber credit card. And that makes me think that they're one of those companies that offer certain things for a limited period of time. And then once they've gotten a bunch of suckers, I mean people, to sign up for it, they actually take that away from you. To me, this is a very sketchy marketing tactic and whenever I see a company do this, it makes me lose a lot of respect for them. So I guess the one exception here is if you use Uber all the time or if you use Uber Eats all the time, this one could be worth it for you because they do have some really nice cashback bonuses. But overall, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into C tier. Next one on the list is going to be the US Bank Cash Plus credit card. Now this is another one that you're gonna see a lot on all of these credit card channels channels where they try to optimize the different rewards that you get. And if you're really strategic with how you use credit cards, this one can pay off extremely well for you. This is one of those credit cards where there's a ton of different rules involved in it and you have to jump through a bunch of different hoops. And it's something that I personally just don't want to have to deal with. But basically you can earn $150 cashback bonus as long as you spend $500 within the first 90 days on eligible purchases. On top of that, the first $2,000 you spend on the card, you can earn 5% cash back on. The catch is that you can only spend $500 per quarter of the year. So you spend exactly $500 in the first quarter, 500 in the second, 500 in the third, and 500 in the fourth. And then overall, you can get about $400 cash back that way. On top of that, you can choose a category to get 2% cash back in. So to me, out of all of the cards that a beginner could get, this might actually be the best one just because of the fact that, you know, $2,000 spent in your first year really isn't all that much. And you could potentially earn $550 cash back just by spending it on the things that you would normally spend your money on. So for that reason, I'm gonna have to go ahead and put this one in S tier. You honestly might not end up using it after the first year, but even for just that one year, if you could get $550 cash back, that's probably gonna be worth it, especially if you're a beginner. Check out my videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell, and then comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, et cetera, that you have on the video. Let me know what cards you've used or what ones I should have included on this list. I know there's a ton of them out there. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.